Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is NXL IGCSE Series 2, second time I've done this, and this is number 44, Proportion. Okay, let's go. So, we have uh, that these two variables are directly proportional. So, what that means is we can write that P, the first variable, is directly proportional, a little fish sign, uh, to the cube of Q. So that means Q cubed. And if two things are proportional, then it means that they are equal when one is multiplied by a constant. And we call that constant of proportionality K most of the time. Um, OK, so that sets up our equation. And then all that we're left to do is use the information that we're given. Normally, they give us uh, one uh, variable uh, and the corresponding other variable and we can substitute it in to find k so 100 so 1350 is equal to k multiplied 15 and then cubed most people forget the cube that's where they lose marks okay so rearranging gives me k is equal to 1350 over 15 cubed to the calculator we go, divided by 15 cubed, and we get two fifths. So k is equal to two fifths, or 0 0.4, whatever you want to use, doesn't matter. And then what we do is we just put k back into that original equation right here. And we are good. We have a formula that connects p and q, so two fifths times by q cubed. Lovely. Calculate the value of p when q equals 20. Well, that's just a simple substitution. We put 2 fifths multiplied by 20 cubed, and that equals, well, let's just do it, 2 fifths times by 20 cubed, and that is 3,200. Lovely. Okay, next question. Uh, P varies directly. So again, uh, that means that they're directly proportional. So we can say that M is proportional to the cube of H, so H cubed, which means that M is equal to K H cubed. And then we get given a set, uh, a pair of variables, which we can substitute in. So four is equal to K multiplied by 0 0.5 cubed. So k is equal to 4 divided by 0 0.5 cubed. OK, so we go to the calculator and we just do 4 divided by 0 0.5 cubed. And that is equal to 32. Lovely. So k equals 32. So my formula, and we use the one we wrote out here on the second line is equal to k, which is 32, multiplied by h cubed. And now the question actually asks for h when m is 500. So we replace m with 500, 32, uh, and then h, we don't know yet, but we need to find that out. So dividing both sides by 32 will give me h cubed. And then taking the cube root of that, will give me h. So I just put that all into my calculator at once. Cube root of 500 over 32 equals 5 over 2. Lovely. So 5 over 2 is the answer right there. Okay, next question. P is inversely proportional to the root of Q. So this was slightly different. Now, if it's inversely proportional, we write that P is proportional to one over the square root of Q. So the reciprocal of that variable. So one divided by it. And then we could do the same thing, that P is equal to K times by one over the square root of Q. But sometimes we just write, well, K times by um, one over the square root of Q is the same as saying that's just k over 
the square root of q. So that's the same thing. Okay, now we get our uh, pair of variables and we substitute them in. So that tells me that 10 is equal to k over the square root of 0 0.0064. So k will equal 10 times the square root of 0 0.0064. OK, right to the calculator. Uh, 10 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.064. That gives me 4 over 5. OK, so the formula is p is equal to Ah, so we could write this in a couple of ways. Uh, there's a fraction on a fraction, uh, which isn't particularly great. So we'd write it maybe 4 over 5 and then the square root of Q. So we could write it like that. Or if you prefer decimals, you could, I guess, put, put 0 0.8 over the square root of Q. Personally, I, prefer, I think the fraction way is probably the best way to write it. That's neatest. But either of those would be accepted as correct answers. Uh, okay, uh, what's next now? So find Q when P is 20. Okay, um, well, in fact, saying that the fractional way is, is better, probably for this actually, using the decimal one will be better. It makes it just slightly easier to deal with, in fact. So using the decimal one instead, we have 20 is equal to 0 0.8 over cube root Q, square root Q, sorry. Multiply both sides by the square root of Q. Gives me 20 times the square root of Q is equal to 0 0.8. Divide both sides by 20. Gives me 0 0.8 over 20. And then finally, I will need to square both sides. So I get 0 0.8 over 20 squared. And that's what will go to my calculator. So that will be... Um, what's the best way of doing this? Just 0.8 divided by 20 and then square the answer 1 over 625 lovely okay next question and we have that a is inversely proportional so 1 over c squared this means that a is equal to k over c squared uh, a is 40 when C is 1.5. So to solve for K, I would do 40 times by 1.5 squared, and that will give me K. Okay, so we could put that into our calculator. We have 40 multiplied by 1.5 squared. Gives me 90. So K is equal to 90. So the equation is A is equal to 90 over C squared. They asked me to find C when A is 1,000, so I replace A with 1,000. Multiply both sides by C squared. Divide both sides by 1,000. And then take the square root of that. So on my calculator, I'll just put square root of 90 over 1,000. And it gives me 3 over 10. Perfect. Okay, next question. And we have that A is proportional, or inverse proportional, so 1 over the square of R. So A is equal to K multiple, or over R squared. And now let's sub in 5 for A and 0 0.3 for R. And then we can rearrange to get k is equal to 5 times 0 0.3 squared. And that is equal to 9 over 20. Okay, so now our formula is that a is equal to 9 over 20 r squared. So replacing the k with 9 over 20, and the 20 can just drop down to the bottom. Okay, lovely. Find the value of A when R is equal to 7.5A. Okay, well, we're finding A and we've got a formula for A. 
and that's 9 over 20 and then r is 7.5a and then squared so let's find out what 7.5 squared is Okay, um, right, brilliant. So we have 9 over 20 times by um, 56.25a squared. Okay, so let's times the bottom there by 20. Okay, so we get a is equal to 9 over 1125a squared. Ah, I see what we need to do now. Multiply both sides by a squared. And that gives me a cubed over there. And 9 over 1,125. So let's then do... Oh, okay, that's nice. So a cubed is equal to 1 over 125 when it simplified. And then when we cube root that we'll get, well, the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 1, 2, 5 is 5. So 1 over 5. Lovely. Okay, right, another inversely proportional. So m is proportional to 1 over g cubed, which means that m is equal to k over g cubed. And when m is 24, g is 2.5. Don't forget to cube. So k is equal to 24 times 2.5 cubed. OK, we go to the calculator. And we get 375. Lovely. So the formula is that m is equal to 375 over g cubed, just replacing the k with 375 in this formula right here. And then it says work out the value of g when m is 1 ninth. So we set 1 ninth is m, so that's equal to 375 g cubed. Um, multiply both sides by g cubed. Gives me this and multiply both sides by 9 gives me this and then cube root and that gives me um, 15 perhaps yes 15. Lovely. Okay, final question, and it is a tricky one where we've got two or three variables all interacting with each other. Now, looking at this, um, the first thing I can do is say that y is proportional to 1 over the square root of x because it's inversely proportional, so it's 1 over. And then I can also say that x is proportional to t cubed. Okay, now I'm told that I've got a pair y and t. So I need to eliminate x and get a formula that connects y and t. Now, most people try and solve this by setting up an equation like this with k, and then setting up an equation like this with k. But that wouldn't be correct because you can't use the same k because they're two different constants. So you could do it by doing one, calling them one of them like k1, the other one k2, but there is actually a better way of doing it. Um, and that way would be to try and get them so they're both uh, proportional to x. At the moment, this one is proportional to um, one over the root of x. So what we could do is square both sides. So I get y squared is proportional well, 1 squared is still 1, but that gives me x. Okay, then I could take the reciprocal of both sides, so flip both of them over. So that gives me 1 over y squared is proportional to x over 1, which is just x. Okay, this is great, because right here I have that 
x is proportional to 1 over y squared. And right here, I have x is proportional to t cubed. So you know what that means. It means that these two variables are proportional to one another. So I can say that what, sorry, I can say that 1 over y squared is proportional to t cubed. Now that's really helpful because the two variables that we do have uh, information on is y and t. Okay, so that means that 1 over y squared is equal to kt cubed. And if I substitute in the numbers now, I get 1 over 8 squared is 64 is equal to k multiplied by 25 cubed. Um, just, uh, let me just write that as 8 squared, just so everyone's clear what that is. And that's 25 um, cubed. Okay, so I can solve for k now. It's not going to be very pretty. But k is going to be 1 over uh, 8 squared divided by uh, 25 cubed. Okay, so that's going to find me k. So what would I do if I did that? So 1 over um, 8 squared and then divided by 25 cubed. It's going to give me, whoa, 1 over a million. Okay, so k is 1 over 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, well that's fine. Um, I can sum it back into my formula, which tells me that 1 over y squared is equal to, um, well, t cubed over million. Now what do I need to use? I need to use it. So it says find the exact value of t when y is 27. Okay, so that means 1 over 27 squared is equal to t cubed over a million. So let's do, let's times both sides by a million. So that will give me um, 1 over 27 squared. I'll then need to multiply by a million and that will give me um, t cubed. Okay, it's not particularly nice. Um, 1371.742. Let's cube root that and hopefully we'll get a nice neat number. Lovely. We do 100 over 9, and that is our final answer. Bosch.